public comment is first on the agenda. Any member of the public? Seeing none, moving on to approval of minutes. Seeing none, moving on to chair report. Let me get out of here quick. Yeah. Uh, we just passed out an op-ed that uh, Lily wrote um, and also a press release for Arbor Day. Do you know where that stands first, the press release? As far as I know, it's on to the mayor's. Mayor's office, great. Um, so I don't know, it, and has the op-ed been submitted to the? I believe it was. Local paper of record? I believe it was. So the Daily Hampshire does that. Oh, okay, so it's already been sent out? I yeah, believe it has. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so any thoughts on that? Hopefully it'll generate some uh, positive coverage and some uh, additional awareness. And I know that in uh, Lily and uh, myself and Rich met with the mayor uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and uh, Lily has been invited uh, by the mayor to update the city council uh, on our activities to date. And she will be doing that on the 20th of this month. That's tomorrow at a council meeting. Um, so if you're free, feel free to attend. I know we've also been in dialogue uh, with uh, Amy uh, Callahan from the DNA, kind of following up on her productive meeting that we had uh, last week. And Amy's going to be uh, leading some efforts uh, to raise awareness of the trees downtown um, and also the work going on on Earth Day. Any thoughts, questions on the update, press release? Sorry, the 20th? It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Is that right? Is it, is it April 20th or is it yeah. May 20th? It is no, April 20th. Yeah. Yes. Tomorrow's the council meeting when the mayor will uh, read the Harbor Day. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Excellent. <clears throat> Anything else? All right, Rich, you're up. Tree board report. Uh, a couple things. Um, we had a public shade tree hearing um, last Wednesday. No, it was the other one, March 22nd at 137 Park Hill Road. Um, there were multiple objections to the tree removal, um, the tree removal request from the resident. Um, I brought the mayor out there, and the mayor concurred uh, with the objection, so the trees will stay. There were two uh, northern northern red oaks, 15 and a 13 inch. Why did they want to take them down? Because they wanted their, to restore their view. Oh, view. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and then uh, we had a public shade tree hearing on the 12th of April. Uh, at 83 Grove Avenue in Leeds, which uh, initially resulted in, a, in an objection, but after some dialogue between the, the resident that objected and the applicant, I think they resolved their issues. So the, the applicant um, is going to be removing the equivalent of 88 and a half inches of DBH of uh, plant material that's there, that's our city trees. So he has to uh, come back to, to the tree warden and to come back to me with uh, documentation as to what his planting plan is going to be within the 20 foot um, setback area. They can come towards mitigation, plus, he's going to be planting uh, trees on the uh, bike path connector that's there at the very beginning at the end of Grove Avenue. So he's got some homework to do to come back to try to get that mitigation. He's going to try to reduce the actual mitigation cost, which was about $7,800, uh, to try to use planting as part of that, and whatever is left, he will pay um, to the tree warden fund. But he really would like, the neighbor really wanted to see the actual tree plantings go back on Grove Avenue somewhere instead of having the funds go to the mitigation fund mm -hmm. because they can be used for anything. So she withdrew her objection. And so I, I will allow the trees to be removed, provided he provides us with the proper documentation and what kind of mitigation plan. So how does that work? You can't hire somebody to remove the trees until you see the... Uh -huh. No, can't do anything. Cool. 
because it's kind of like a double, it's like a double pawn, the fact that I'm the tree board, plus I'm also the highway superintendent, I control, uh, I'm the signing authority for the trench permit, so the director is what I do it in her stead. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so it actually is helpful because you, they can't get a building permit without a signature on a driveway permit. Mm -hmm. But they can't get the driveway permit until they go through the public shade treatment process and all that, that's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a little frustrating, I think, for some folks, but it's the price of doing business. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see more and more of this happening because lots now that are uh, that are that conform to uh, the new zoning uh, ordinances are going to have direct conflicts with public shade trees mm -hmm. and significant trees that are on the property because a lot of these folks are developing side yards. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of those, if it's, if it's I can't you can't use the significant tree ordinance unless the actual the actual applicant has to go from the planning board for a site plan review. So that's one of the downfalls of the significant tree ordinance. Had the planning board changed that so it just wasn't for a site plan review. So for example, if it, if it applied to, uh, like this particular gentleman had a large building lot and actually had enough frontage and enough square footage to actually carve off a piece and make a separate building lot. It just requires an a and r it doesn't require a site plan review. So he's able to actually carve out two driveways in a, in a normal lot, which would normally just be a single house lot with a single driveway. So there's twice as much tree destruction, but still doesn't fall under the site plan um, regs. So it's a learning process. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. But it works, though. We've stopped a lot of people from removing trees. And if they had to remove trees, then folks have actually had to pay cost for in kind plantings so um, I don't think I have anything else for you to um, I, I think the other things that uh, I want to talk about are already on this list so I think that's about it for my report anybody have any questions I have two questions that mm -hmm. may or may not be related to you um, the stuff they're doing on the side of the um, Academy of Music there mm -hmm. Like they own that tree, or what? City, that tree. The city owns the city owns the, the city owns the Academy of Music. Okay. Academy of Music is run by a separate board of trustees that uh -huh. sets their policy in regards to their property or the trust that they have. So that tree back there is really not. It's not a public shade tree because it's not within the public right of way. It's on their property. The big oak we're talking about. Entirely over. Oh. And dug a trench. What? What is that? Is that a? What, what's the gravel part of it going to be? It's going to be for drainage. Oh. They also had to dig it up too because the gas service that was in the back of that was too shallow, so they had to excavate it. I mean, they they actually spent time and they air spaded um, a lot of the roots that were there. But the problem with that tree is that because that's been driven over for so long. That really all the damage is pretty much even done yeah. by compaction. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, it's it's already in I wouldn't say severe decline, but it's it's about halfway. I mean you're gonna see it really start to fail now, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 I mean it's been through a lot, it's been there for a long time, I, I don't know. But even if they airspaded they they paved over the yeah. entire <laughs> Great, there's a drainage thing there, but well, they, I don't know the, how it would actually. The academy work. has, you know, the, that whole plan was vetted, and that was part of the, the phase two of the Pulaski Park project. And so the academy was that was what they wanted originally it was going to be gravel, but they want they paved it because they have so many um, trucks entering there to actually bring in their stage equipment and to oh. bring in their props and everything. Mm -hmm. So. They could have done some probably over there. They could have done things differently, I would agree, but it's kind of not, I don't really have, I don't have, I didn't have a lot to say. Yeah, yeah. I was just there. wondering what, yeah. um, and then the other question I have is uh, behind Pulaski Park where they're uh, finishing up, you know, they're doing that. Yeah. Are they, is there a planting plan for that? Those, mm -hmm. those slopes are steep, There's way steeper plan. than I thought. I don't have it handy though. Uh -huh. I can get it for you if you want me to do it. Yeah, Let's take a look at it. They have a planting plan. 
I don't know how we're going to maintain this. Which was great. I mean, it's so steep. It's so steep. I, I had no idea that. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I mean, we have to, we have to make the sidewalks have to be changed so we could actually use the bond here to plow the switchback. Oh, instead of actually having a shovel or a snow blowing, it's pretty. They didn't want to put in any types of uh, like retaining walls. I mean, that is so steep. I, I didn't know how they're going to get anything to grow there. Next, hopefully it doesn't rain before they cover it up. I, honest to God, go out there and look at it. It's unbelievable. Like how steep it is. I, I, uh, oh. Anyway, I was just wondering. Yep. <laughs> you know, part of the plus and part of the plan. That's correct. Yeah. It was all done by, the design was done by Stimson and Associates that designed the front half of the park. So we have a different contractor. So Mass West is the was the little bit instead of uh, so Mass West will most have to sub out all the landscape work that's going on there because they're just really just the construction for where Mountain View actually is both they do all the construction all the site work plus they do all the finish work so it's kind of all it's you got a pretty good deal from Mountain View I think in the beginning and I, you know they're a proven company I don't know who's going to be doing the site. The, uh, the actual landscape. But we have a resident engineer who's on the project every day, so nothing gets by her, which is good. So, good, big, big undertaking. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Rich? Moving on. Uh, Jen and Jay, uh, tree list plan to move from draft to final. So, uh, so let me just, I reworked it uh, uh, in consulting with uh, Jay to get the passes around. Uh, and uh, this is just a list of trees. I have a meeting with uh, oh my gosh. Alicia. Alicia, thank you. Uh, next week uh, to insert other, like the Vermont pages in there and stuff like that. So, if anybody sees, we don't have to do this now, but if anybody sees a gross mistake on this, uh, I don't know whether there's an expectation on that. Um, I'm missing one? I have one, one comment that um, ST is often used for um, salt tolerance in other places, so it might be confusing. Oh, okay, I could change that. Okay, ST, yeah. Maybe make it SM instead? Yeah. Or SH? Yeah. Um, smoke bush. Smoke bush. Instead of smoke tree, uh, smoke bush. So, the this is just a general question. I, I, I haven't looked at it carefully enough to understand, but of the, um, when you have a specific um, cultivar, so what these are under, when you, like under Hawthorne's thing, that lists three, four, um, those are ones that you consider that this particular. Yeah, we, right. we tried to keep it small so we could <coughs> list every possible. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, but I mean, you picked that one you like, especially. Yeah. yeah. There may be cultivars underneath, so the first name is the genus and the second name is the species. Uh -huh. So there may be like other, like Cretaceous, Virtus, Blue Boy, or right. Snow Cloud, or whatever. Right. So we didn't like get it down to there. Yeah, we we will put right. like right. reference to the Cornell recommendations. You know, right. first, because they have a lot of specific varieties. Yep. And the suggestion was to put it according to the size. Right. Um, and hopefully it would be in a more attractive format than what I have the ability to do. I think it's really <laughs> nice. The simplicity makes it easier to look at. I have a question. Um, so these are, why are trees on it that say not street trees? Um, that's a good question. Those, uh, 
Uh, this document is going to be the attached papers, which is going to include a suggestion of a plant, how to plant a tree and some other information. Um, can also go to uh, somebody who's coming in for a building permit or any citizen that wants to plant trees in their yard or these are suggested for the city of Northampton, not just for shade trees or even for developers. Hopefully this will, the document will be in the planning department too. So everybody who comes in can get this document. And the document will be both uh, an initial list like this, as well as then each tree will have additional information. So, uh, what the plant, we didn't want to, you know, the, the Cornell tree guide is like this thick, mm -hmm. you know, like you want to, and this tone that nobody's going to look at, you know. So, uh, one, uh, so what I'm going to do with the help of Alicia, hopefully, is to take these pages uh -huh. out of the Vermont booklet mm -hmm. and attach them some way and then we're also going to put in this uh, planting preferred planting plan that Jay just gave me from mass improved tree planting guidelines so that'll go in there too mm -hmm. um, I think that was and a little sheet about uh, some references like the, uh, the Cornell um, book for more detailed like variety choices and stuff. So hopefully it's in. <laughs> that will be finished. So, so I, I just have a question. I, I really appreciate the fact that you've worked very hard to do this because I, I think we're probably taking about seven years to put this together and right. I'm going. <laughs> so without your help it wouldn't have happened. Um, but I have I'd like to know your thoughts on taking this a step further mm -hmm. and actually taking this document and putting this document together with, um, for example, uh, the uh, tree protection guidelines. So what I'd like to do is like to have the document like this. So what I did with this document is I gave the original one uh, to the gentleman who actually is doing the project at 83 Grove Avenue because I wanted to start somewhere with trees that the commission recommended that I'm in agreement with instead of handing them the old list that we have. Yeah. Um, and I would prefer that they don't use the list that the planning, yeah, yeah, yeah. The planning board uh, has. Yeah. So, but to take it a step further, what would be easy, what would be really simplistic would be you know, having this as part of the overall guideline uh, as to uh, you know our local ordinance that we have, which is basically the significant tree ordinance, the NGL chapter 87 regulations, tree protection. So basically it's like a tool that you know you could give to a prospective uh, builder, prospective contractor or homeowner and say this is what is expected of you um, when you're actually going to decide to you want to you want to start the process of, of doing any kind of renovation construction, um, and then eventually you know obviously we would give this document to the planning board once it's finalized in the format and actually give it to them and say this is what you know we would like you to amend um, the zoning uh, laws that you have or the zoning regs which they can do without going to front council so we could actually implement these and take the other stuff out of there subdivision. Uh, subdivision rules and regs, thank you. So you still have to amend, I think, the um, commercial district zoning code, which has a separate list. Okay. So I mean, I, I think this is a great place to start, but I think being able to, because what I'm finding myself doing is I'm, I'm giving, uh, for example, the gentleman who did the building on Spring Street, which we had a public shade tree hearing for, you know, he, he asked for, you know, can you show, you meet with my contractor to explain to him what kind of tree protection you want. Mm -hmm. So I brought documents that I had um, from um, the ANSI standards that we use, which are not, you're not supposed to copyright them, so I, I actually just kind of change a little bit, hand the information. Our engineering department actually has some really nice schematics they've done of tree protection for different projects. One of them is Pulaski Park, the other one is Hinkley Street. So I like to incorporate those things in, in this, with including this, to make a manual. Yeah. But I'm going to need some probably help at some point. So I. Just but it sounds like a lot of that information is already existing. It does. It is existing. It's just making it in a 
you know, putting it in our, in our own format, just like you've done with this, instead of basically just handing out the Vermont Tree Guide, you know, you've taken the time to actually determine, you know, these are the, uh, the trees that we'd like to see planted, you know, what the, um, you know, where their application would work best, so on and so forth. So that's a long, because it would make my job, my job a lot easier um, if it's all in black and white. And then the other thing too is that when someone comes in and they actually take out an application for a site to, uh, to do construction that requires a site plan review, this whole package can go right with the application. It includes tree protection, it includes everything, it includes really what they're going to be responsible for. And for more information, see that sort of community, contact this person. And I've talked to Carolyn Mish about this already. She said it would be very, it would be very helpful. Um, so it's just food for thought. Do you have the other information in a format that you'd like at this point? I have, uh, no, I have some of the information about tree protection. I do not have, the, I do not have the uh, NGL ordinances arranged in such a way, but I would, I, I would need to spend some time to put those together and how they should look. And then we can put them all in one book. Yeah, my hope was to, sorry, go ahead. My hope was to, when Alicia helps me, that I could put like it in a PDF or something mm -hmm. that you could then add the pages to. You know, to uh, when I talk, yeah. she may know a better format than I do. So I could talk to her and okay. she knows, you know. And if she says, uh, I'm not the person, then we'll have to figure somebody out, you know. We might as well do it so it's changeable, and accessible and that you could add to it or take it out or substitute, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Makes sense. I mean, it would be helpful instead of me handing five different, yeah, totally. emailing five different things to folks that are asking for stuff. Yeah. Um, having one document and actually having it like bound, sort of like the yep. Vermont one, where you can mm -hmm. actually just say, here's who's going to this tree manual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this is X, Y, and Z, what you need to do in order to get this accomplished, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's, because there's so many different, I guess you could say, permitting authorities that control different pieces of the puzzle, you know, uh, it, it's just going to have to be looked at carefully as to, you know, you want to you want to try to keep it streamlined to as best as you can, so you don't make it more confusing than helpful. Right. Uh, so, so, so it sounds like you want to include the uh, like the protection uh, schematics. Yep. And you want to um, include the public shade tree state law code, whatever that is. Yeah, NGL chapter 87. 87. But it's only part of it, right? Or it's the whole thing? No, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to do the part that's pertinent, the per part. pertinent to public shade trees. And you want to include the um, the, the protect the um, significant tree ordinance. What else? Any any other uh, information that's in <coughs> that zoning would cover for shade trees, which I don't know what else that would be. There's a lot of different. There's so much stuff there that I don't. You know, there's bits and pieces through that through our through the uh, zoning ordinance that I'm not sure we could fit it all in here. No, I, yeah, I don't know if we want to tackle that right no. now. The only other thing I, I think would be helpful is just a, a flow chart around tree protection. Mm -hmm. Like a just you know a, a fairly basic decision tree, mm -hmm. pardon the pun. Yeah. Um, just around, you know, trees and are they protected? Can I trim it? Can I cut it down? Who do I need to go to? Um, yeah. You know that. That probably would actually be nice to see because then it would make it very easy for people to use the manual mm -hmm. instead of actually having a okay NGL chapter is under section one, so if I have to do this and you know if you if unfortunately the the NGL chapter 87 to even trying to interpret the language, it's not very well written. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to ask for interpretations. For example, it says that a public shade tree is a tree that's on and within the public right of way, including trees that are in section seven. So section seven are trees that are setback plantings. So now there, mm -hmm. it says the law says that trees that are setback plantings are Public shade trees. 
So that's very confusing. I have I'm asking Alan Seawalt to get a on that. But those are the kind of things if you had a floor chart, which I agree with, it would be much easier for people to navigate. Could we also put something in there about if you want a setback tree planted? What to do? The flow chart, sure. You could probably do that on the flow chart. You know? Yeah. You, yeah. You could, first question is, do you, do you have trees on your property? No. Well, then request right. one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So it sounds like, Rich, you just gave yourself some homework to uh, pull together some of those protection schematics. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two things are relatively easy to grab. And then how do we, how do we plan on tackling the flow chart and the decision tree? I. I have a, I could probably, if the, my semester ends in middle of May, so if we could carve out a time to meet and just sit together, I could just ask you questions and I could probably, um, between the two of us, we could probably s sketch it out and then I can find somebody who can make it look good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't have the skills to... Well, it's more just drawing it out, making sure it does comply exactly. with the current regs. I mean, yeah. We may have to pass it by Alan um, mm -hmm. just to get his stamp of approval on it. Yeah, but, I you know, it should be pretty basic. You know, do I have a tree? I did, right. Yes or no? If you do, is it within here, you down. know 15 feet of the edge of the pavement? Well, then you may have to be a public shade tree, in which case you go over here. If not, okay, and then are you applying for a permit that goes before the planning board. Okay, well now you're over here and this is you know, something fairly simple like that. Yeah. Would that work for you? That would yeah. be very helpful. Yeah. I don't I don't think that I have the bandwidth at the moment. Right, I don't know. I mean it, I think more than one person. Yeah, well, interns. Yeah, they're all the interns. Oh, no, no, no. No. <laughs> no, I don't have any interns. I'm just staring myself. It's never really it's really down the weeds question, which is, which, um, I don't remember the, the number of oak trees, the percentage of oak trees, but I remember maple was way up. Oak was pretty pretty high up in terms of percentage. So I thought oak was in the over planning category. Um, oh, I don't know, is it? And the C O P L. Right, right, right. I think, I, I think we had discussed oak and at least like casually said, oh, that's, there's two, that's it for oak. For, 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 oh, okay. Oak. I, I don't know. I mean, at one of the meetings. Um, I don't know if it's true, and I don't have a number. So just before it's finalized, we probably mm -hmm. should go look at the numbers and see. I don't, I don't have that document. We've got a lot of oak. We've got a lot of oak, but ah, but, the, but I remember a lot of the same oak. Yes, and now right. we have a lot of diversity. Right, mm -hmm. and all that. But I think we discussed it now. I'm remembering the oaks that we have. There are a lot of them that are kind of along the forest. So in other words, as they go along Ryan Road, because well, that's the natural, that's what's growing there. Yeah. So they probably picked up a lot of trees that yeah, aren't. I, I mean, just anecdotally, I don't think we have a lot of oak oh, street trees. No, I don't think so. Oak oh, street trees, right, right. We have oak trees, trees that are part of the public way. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it's something to think about. So maybe leave that the way it is, but at the same time, um, maybe we can go back to planting oaks and the tree bark. So uh, according to this, we have uh, Northampton, we have 32% maple, 10% yeah. of population, and 13% uh, oak. And so, I mean, 15 would be, I think you're right on that, though. It's a lot of it is out, outside of the city limits. Right. I think the forested areas. Right, right, right. So they have a different weight because they're, yeah. I mean, I, we don't care for them in the same level so yeah, in northern, northern red oak is the uh, it's, it's five percent of our population and then ten oak and then, and then what's that what's the, what's the guy like 30 what is it then? 15 i think like what are the three numbers yeah. it varies you know so much percent of yeah, yeah. so much percent of species so much I can't. It's a, it's a 10, 20, 30. That's what I meant, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Um, they're different. I mean, that's what they mean. But they're, they're different. different. Yeah. There are right. other people. There's, there's it's arbitrary. Right. And there's all sorts right. of stuff. So I'm right. just saying the oaks are, in the, are hitting the, near the possible. Anyway. 
if, it, if you did a spatial distribution, I bet you they're all going to be up. Well, I think if we diversify the species, get away from the red oaks. I could put limited plant limit on red oaks. Uh, well, maybe red, possibly thin oak and red oak. Yeah. What about black oak? Is there anyone that's not on that? Good question. I don't, I don't know how available it is. Oh, maybe it's not used for plantings or something? Yeah, I think it's a native, yeah. but it's not something you're going to get in the nursery, I don't think. Oh. No, I don't think you're going to plant it. So, so I mean, just really simply, there aren't very many white oaks I mean, they, right. in the white oak family. It'd be great to have more white oaks. They're so beautiful. They're very few. In the right place. Oaks are hard to propagate because they tend to put out a very deep tap root when mm -hmm. they're young. Right. And so transplanting them is very difficult. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, should I put a limit on uh, red oak? I'm for it. Okay. Yeah, I would think so. Be fine. So Quercus rubra, right? Yeah, and, and and the related trees, which would be pin oak and scarlet oak, and uh, well, scarlet oak would be nice. The more I love, but I think we oaks planted make, three, but it's ten just now. I think they make great street trees, though. Yeah, oaks. Scarlet? No, oaks in general. Oh, oh yes, they I do. mean, I I wouldn't want to cut back. How just many about oak species. Or on street trees. Yeah. But if, if well, they're. Um, what about pin oak? Um, it's one tough okay. bridge. Please climb yeah, that. I like, like red oak better. But. Tough tree. Yeah, I try to climb. <laughs> <laughs> Walking you Walk into it. Um, I, I want to discuss this uh, the nuts thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Rich, maybe your thoughts too. From my point of view, I um, mean, you know, oaks and that generally nuts. Um, mm -hmm. A couple others in here. I'd rather flip it and turn it more positive and say edible mm -hmm. if they are uh, edible species right. and you know mm -hmm. leave yeah. it to you know people to figure, figure out that they drop. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, you know it, just in the effort of creating a more edible landscape, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know I'd be in favor of chain, flipping that around and, and you know remarking on the ones that are an edible uh, mm -hmm. uh, collectible plant. Is it like edible it for humans or edible for health? <laughs> well, yeah, that's a distinction. So, so which uh, what are you talking? Edible for who? Yeah, first in humans. Humans or yeah. animals? Black walnut. White oak. Well, oaks are edible. White oak is They are. They are. Well, sure. used to be state. Shagbark. Shagbark hickory. Not bitter, not. Oh, no. Shagbark hickory, or people call it. Pig, I don't like pig nut. I'm not sure. They don't do pig nut? Yeah. I, I, forget, I forget which of you have. Now I'll be able to them all up. I know yeah. they do shagbark hickory. Yeah. You're killing me. <laughs> and there's that, um, what is that tree with the, um, it's like a Japanese name, with the red, Fruits with the little bumps all over it. Oh, they're uh, corners. Yeah, Cousa dogwood. That one. Cousa dogwood, yeah. 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 People eat those? It's yeah. A good jam. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Cousa. Mm -hmm. Edible, edible. Cornus moss is edible, too. Yeah, you know, my only thought was you know, a lot of trees make a mess, and you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We're gonna get positive spin on. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Fine. I'm totally open. I feel no uh, strong marriage to anything. That's, you know, I'm happy to change anything about people. Have well, input. so on that subject, are there other edible trees that we want to add to the list to try to increase um, edible landscapes? Other things that aren't on here that we could. I, I, it might be on here, but I, I know that there's a there's a, a move afoot to plant pecans. Apparently, there's a pecan. There is. There is. Page has got two whips she's cultivating and uh, oh. she's explained. She had me go to a website. I looked at it. And in fact, 
the fig trees and they can go to 20 below in there. Yeah. And she's got them. Hmm. We're cultivating them. Yeah, with climate change, we're going to get warmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, Thanks. the pecan has kind of arrived. I mean, I don't know if you have to have a comprehensive list. I'm just saying that, that, that it's happening. Pecans are happening. On yeah. our street. I mean, I think this is a this is a great start. As you said, we can yeah, add to it if we yeah, want to, yeah. you know, make a make a shift and go more of an edible route. I think we can. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to bog this down anymore. I'd love to get this to the planning board um, you know, relatively soon mm -hmm. so they can begin to digest it and then uh, make a vote put it in the subdivision rules. Mm -hmm. Can we eat horse chestnuts? We can try. No. Uh -uh. No. So, no. I mean, no. No. Mulberry, so mulberry's not on here. That was yeah. So I mean, is it only if you boil or you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Must be ground into a paste, <laughs> right. fermented. <laughs> right. I mean, you, there are, people do stuff like boil them and age them and do all this stuff. Yeah. Huh. Oak also. Yeah. Oak. Yeah. yeah. Acorns. acorns can be. Especially white white oak acorns. Right. Red oaks are pretty bitter. Yeah. But white oaks, you know, what they taste like they taste like artichokes. Oh really? Yeah. The white oak Yeah. Put that on there. It tastes like garbage. I know. <laughs> All right. All right. Great. Well, uh, very nice. So we'll see. Uh, Rich, you'll pull together the protection schematics maybe for the next meeting and we can take a look at them. And then, um, Jen, you said you have some time in May? Yeah. Yeah. I can and give me like another couple of weeks. I'll be done. Okay. Great. Then I'll have a lot of time. But I can, you know, move this a lot faster than Excellent. Nice work. Anything else on the tree list? Moving on. Who's taking us through the spring planting and watering planning? Topic that never dies. <laughs> it's because we keep watering stuff. All right, good. We're going to water and plant. Are there um, certain dates for planting, or is it just kind of ongoing? Or? Well, I can speak to it, I guess. Rich has been working on uh, getting uh, a plant for South Street. Um, the trees, about 40 of the trees that would go to South Street will be arriving next week on the certain. So if the plan comes together and the trees come together by the end of the month, then in May, we can start planting uh, South Street, which is a, you know, more major. On, on the other side of that, flip side, smaller plantings around town. Uh, I'm, I'm rich and I are planning to, to have the volunteers start on Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. Um, small scale. So the idea of a larger scale plantings on uh, South Street would take some coordination with DPW. And I don't know uh, if we're going to plant 40 trees, would we do that in four, ten, four sets of ten, or would that be? I guess it's as good as mine. Okay, because we would need some, some support because we were talking about some flat uh, signs, flat uh, homes. Is that yeah, right? So, I mean, let's just, just back up for a second. So, yep. what Rob and I did today is, uh, in regards to South Street, uh, we actually walked South Street today. So, even though Tree Keeper has uh, some good information in it, um, in regards to planting locations, I, you still need to go out and actually visit each site because Tree Keeper doesn't tell you if there's a sign there, doesn't tell you if there's a hydrant in the way, um, doesn't identify water boxes, sewer lines, gas, gas lines, lines. Right. doesn't do any of that stuff. So, what we're gonna, what I think we should do because South Street is going to be such a large planting, and it's probably, my guess is based on what's available for a sock, it might take us two years to complete it. It might be a two-year project. Um, or it may not be a two-year project, but I think it's going to be probably roll into next year. Um, the easiest thing for us to do is actually develop a plan. So engineering has this plan already developed. This was actually when they did the bicycle, um, the bike and ped uh, markings and uh, the rumble strips. So if this is still saved, which I think it is, they can actually alter it very easily to actually give us addresses um, both sides of the street, including the tree belt on both sides. So we can actually, and possibly, possibly take the GIS data out of Tree Keeper and actually slap it onto this document. 
So it would be like having a regular planting plan if you were doing, like for Pleasant Street or any, any construction, major construction project. Um, because of the volume of the planting that's gonna happen. So then we can actually take this document and just walk into the field and actually what Rob and I did today is we kind of did a little field work and we looked at different um, locations on South Street that had wide tree belts, narrow tree belts. We walked the whole uh, outbound or left hand or I guess you would say underwire under wire area which is on the left hand side mm -hmm. to try to get a feel for what's there and um, how many trees we could stuff in there. The other thing TreeKeeper doesn't show you is that it doesn't show you it shows you overhead utilities, but one of the things that I didn't think about was I didn't ask them to identify other overhead trees. So yeah. on South Street, you have a lot of setback plantings that are on private property. Oh. They're okay. large mature trees mm -hmm. that have right. overhanging limbs mm -hmm. at the lower level. Utility companies come in and they cut a big chunk out of it. And then there's the top canopy of the tree that goes over the utility. So there's a few like that that also would prevent us from planting mm -hmm trees underneath them because you know the success rate would be really poor most likely. In addition, I would project that we'll get about 20 setback plantings on that side of the street. There are there are a lot of places for setback planting, so it really could be a really big plan that could, I think it's going to take two seasons based upon the amount of nursery stock that we're probably going to need to do the work. But I think having a plan and then actually showing where we're you know, what we have for stock, what's available sticking it on the plan and then saying, this is where we're gonna plant this stock this particular season. Next year, this is the stock that we need to go after because we wanna plant this rest of the street this, this way. And then of course there is that um, percent of stock we're gonna leave for other setback plantings around the city and other requests. But I think that's really kind of the, for me, organ being organized like this is a lot easier than trying to, you know, I'm not saying willy-nilly, but I think that we have to make sure that we, it's just like a construction project. It's not like we're planting 17 trees in 17 different locations. You know, we're allowed to scout it out, or I scout it out, or, you know, we work together to scout out. So engineering is hopefully gonna get back to me in a couple of days and show me what they have. And then what we'll do is we'll try to go back out into the field and actually come up with a plan um, to plant in blocks. Um, based upon the stock that we have. And then I think we talked about today that some of those areas might, that are gaps, might be gaps because we, yeah. you know, we don't have the stock to put in there and we'll get the stock the following year. Right. And, and, and there, there are at least 10 trees anymore that will be coming in the fall anyway in order to leave that lined up. All, all this, the sweet gums and the honey locusts and the all down near South, whole South Street. There's a whole bunch of trees that we'll get in the fall. So there's going to be trees in the spring, trees in the fall, and probably trees in the following spring. So I, I asked, uh, so after our last meeting where we talked about planting a maximum of 200, 250 trees a year, um, we're going to go to the outer limits and do 250. That's the goal to get in the ground this year. So that includes the 110 that we have presently that are coming from Emerson Nursery next week, plus um, we're compared to 140, to 140 that uh, we pared the list down. Now I have to send that list over to Amherst Nursery to see what's available, so it could be less than 140 because he may have already sold some of the material. But if that's the case, that's okay. We'll we'll just say we're this is the plan, and we're going to plant that next year. Or um, if we so choose to, we may. Um, which would break my own rule, but we'd actually maybe try to do some bare root plantings, possibly. You know, that we kind of yeah. talked about that today, all bare root plantings, mm -hmm. that we might be able to have better, easier luck finding the particular species we want that may not be grown in grow back. So. Possibly other sor sources. Yeah, and possibly, and possibly other, other sources. For bare root, I mean, yeah. because that thing was a bit of a problem last time. I mean, one of the things for, one of the things and, you know, that we've talked about planning with volunteers is that it's, you know, if you have a big ball, it's kind of hard to have folks lug the thing around. Mm -hmm. And it requires a lot of support from the department because we have to, you know, bring the tree there. We have to actually assist in getting into the hole, laying the tree over. You know, not that people can't do that, but it just is a lot of heavy lifting versus a row bag or a bare root tree. So it's 
faster too. Yeah, it's a lot faster. You can actually cover a lot more ground with a lot more trees, which we discovered after our first year of planting. You know, we, we were doing like three trees on a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. to, we ended up doing nine or ten or right. twelve yeah. on, a, on, a, on the next year. So, do the ball bags have a better success rate though? The grow bags have a better success rate. Oh, than oh than yeah. I, yeah. But the ball, the ball root ones. No. It doesn't. Okay. It just depends on the species. What what method is best? Uh, or just whatever. I don't know. Every, every little planting seminar that I've ever gone to, and I mean, Jay can speak to this. Jay's been planting trees much longer than I have, but I, you know, it's more to do with the supplier, I think. Oh. But there are a lot. There are a lot of species. There, there are warnings about trying to do them bare root. I don't oh. know what causes that mm -hmm. to be the warning, but it says right on them, like, difficult. It, uh, I think yeah. right in the uh, Cornell tree guides, it'll say uh. very hard to do bare root. Some of them will say. Only in the fall, there are really, I, I have no idea why. Mm -hmm. It's just different genetic, I mean, species, some species yeah. right, work, some don't. Yeah. yeah. So I think after we have, I mean, after we have the trees in the inventory, we'll set up some planting. Right. Things. But I guess we could think, I mean, is, there will be, is, when we do that, we, there will be signage. Is that? Signage. What are you talking about signage? On South Street, are we going to have um, men working signs? You're here in some of those places, you're going to have to. Right. So we're going to have to be very coordinated with the PPLD, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so South Street's because of the volume of traffic, mm -hmm. you know, and how fast it is, and Jane can attest to the issues right down the street, mm -hmm. that you're going to have to have in order to, if you're not used to, if volunteers are not used to working in the street every day, so they're going to have to be afforded some kind of protection. So right, it's right. going to be either uh, a public works and signs and cones are great, but people don't pay any attention to them. A vehicle is a different story. Yep. So you have to have um, signs, cones, and some kind of vehicle with some safety lights because you will be planting, you know, especially on the lower end of South Street where it, uh, there's actually just a bike lane. Yeah. There's a little fog line, a yeah. little breakdown lane, very small, and the bike lane, and then uh, rumble strips, and then the 11 foot travel way. There's, there's that little place that describes not very well. <coughs> so you could accidentally step off the curb and just say, oh, wow, doesn't that tree look poof? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you're yeah. by a car, unfortunately, which would be really bad. So yeah. South Street's going to require coordination. So, so that would, I mean, it's just if we're going to do it in a coordinated way, we probably want to do as many trees at, at a time as we can but so that we don't have you guys coming out over and over again. So we probably want to do like these 10 trees at a time, 10, 15. I, we sure, but I think, it, I think that can all. Those are all the details that can be. Yep. Those are like small details that we can work out. But I right. think setting the, getting the tree stock here, and then setting the dates for actually doing the planting. Uh, once we've put everything together on the plan, then I think we'll, right. we'll be able to coordinate how and when. So we won't set the planting dates yet. No. No, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think we should. And I don't know if that's going to goof goof up what you guys are trying to do over there. I don't know, we need to hear from a few more things. Well, we'll um, go with the flow. The more lead time we have, the more likelihood we'll get people who we've invested training in and who we've built sort of a team around. Okay. I'm sure we, you know, we could put out the word and people, all kinds of people would come. We are trying to build trained people. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, my, I guess or even just good group members that uh, know the routine yeah, and yes, yeah, so I mean, it's good soon. Yes, um, Sue has been saying so you almost need one like person. Let's keep one conversation, please. Well, other people plant just so they're not interrupted so that they get the tree done before curious people stall them up. So they're all paying attention and mm -hmm. doing yeah. it. Enough. So it sounds like the first thing you need to do is uh, get the trees and do the plan, and then we're not really going to know what exactly is going on before that plan is done and the trees are at least ordered slash in hand, right? Yeah, so we have quite a few trees, underwater trees that we already own that will be coming here. So those actually can be done this spring and early summer, and then I'm going to work on getting the rest of the 140 trees uh, I have to send the actual pair down list back to Amherst Nursery to get a, to see what he has that's available and then get a cost and then make a contract with him because it'll be over ten it'll be over ten thousand dollars. But I can just solicit three quotes because it's under thirty 
35,000. Yeah, procurement rules. You can do it two ways. I can use the combines, which is a state contract, or I can do the three quotes. And they have to respond to me in a certain time frame, and then I just make a standard contract, and we just get the trees when we need them. So but your first round of underwater plantings is going to be, you think, in May? May? Yeah, okay. I well, think then, if we, if that, date should be, that date should be established so we can get the volunteers cranked. I think, I think we will probably have that established within the next week Great. or so. I'll just communicate, Rob, communicate yep. to Katrina with Hampton yep. and get a little army out there. And then as far as the watering, um, we're back, we're really going to be doing what we did last year. <coughs> but we're going to hope it rains. Yeah. Well, True. the other thing about True. the watering is that the state's going to force us to go into a water ban. What? Yeah, the state's going to force all of Massachusetts to go into a, a water ban. Well, what do you mean? I thought that the... It was lifted. Yeah. It was lifted, but the state is because we are so far behind still. Oh, we are? Yeah, well, we're, we're, even though the flow of the Mill River is correct and we have water flowing over the dam, the state has decided, and I think it's May I think it's May 1st, I'll have to find out, but I've heard that we're going to go back into a, a, oh. water, a water ban. Oh. Well, but because that, the groundwater level is still too low? No, because the, because parts of the state are still in a drought, and the state does not want to lift the water ban completely. Oh. In other words, the state wants to make sure that if we run into the same problem, um, that we are already in a water ban statewide mm -hmm. because of the amount of the lack of water we've had for the last two years. I don't have the documentation to share with you to really explain it, oh. so I apologize. That's what I was told by the director. Because we had right, we just looked at the water. Bank. Right, I thought it was just based on the level of the river. Uh, the state DEP can the, the, oh, the right. state DEP can override us at any given time. So but you can still hand water with the. Uh, that's correct. So so right. the rules the rules that will apply will apply as to what we had last year, uh -huh. because we are in a drought advisory. We're not in a drought warning. When we're in a drought warning, that's when we're in trouble because we can't do any outdoor watering of any kind. Even like so, even the trees or even food crops. Uh, food crops are exempt from that, but the oh. trees will be able to water. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, so let's pray for rain. Nice. In terms of watering, mm -hmm. um, the maps that you were developing, like that one, uh, if we're going to develop some routes for watering, it would be great to be able to get a kind of comprehensive overview of where everything is, and if those are something that can be duplicated grateful to have some so we can uh, see what looks like good roots and where the oddballs are and so on you have at least a list of all the trees that were watered last year yeah we have a comprehensive list it's just not it's in a word or excel document and it's not uh, on a map i have an idea about coordinating the watering i don't know if this makes sense or not but if other people say volunteers are going to be doing some watering and maybe homeowners are going to maybe water a tree in front of their place and DPW is going to go around and water stuff. Um, would it make sense to do a, a Google Doc where people could um, record when they've watered a tree so that it doesn't, you know, have to get watered twice? Or that maybe that's just too much work? Well, what, what I heard Rich say last time is you guys are driving around about what? So, you know, extra water is extra water, but you're driving around about a what? You're going to check on everything. Pretty much regardless. So you know, if the tree full water, we'll just go to the next one. Yeah. I mean, I would. So I would you're just going to cover everything anyway. So yeah. then, what's the role of the, um, you know, volunteers to water? Um, well, I think, and I don't want to speak for you, but I think we had talked about before about possibly doing having Tree Northampton possibly responsible if they have enough volunteers to be for, for a small portion of watering. It might be like centrally located, like yeah. Uh, maybe three or four streets off of Elm Street. One specific right area. Street. Correct. Yeah, that makes sense. And then sense. we would canvas the rest, but I think it it's all depends yeah. upon their availability. So yeah. this is why a map would be. You just yeah. have to be able to commit yeah. to that area. Yeah, they're like paper routes. I mean, you yeah. just right. make sections. Good. Well, that makes a lot more sense than duplicating what they're already doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no point in that. Whatever works for them. <laughs> it would be especially good if there's an area far out, like, like on a cardinal way we mm -hmm. planted a bunch of trees. You know, right. if, if we could arrange that to be done by the people who live there, then the truck doesn't have to go to Cardinal Way, which is kind of 
I mean, last, I mean, last year we had last year we were in crisis mode because we just basically went from you know to 30, 40 to 50 degrees out to 90. Right, yeah. and stayed 90. I mean, the day we did our day last year was it was 88 degrees yeah. in the afternoon. We were doing bare root trees, and they're wolfing right in front yeah. of us. So yeah. I think mean, mean, Rob had a good point. What, Rich, why don't you? provide the areas that would be beneficial to get off your guys' plate for watering. You know, the, out, the, out, the outlying areas that are taking up twice as much time as they should, and maybe we can get the volunteers focused on that uh, in coupled with the, uh, the residents of that area. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like a job to yeah, we need a comprehensive plan. Because we were talking about how to how are we going to make some kind of a map and yeah. figure out zones. And there's a couple of approaches. One is um, Jonathan Gachi actually tested out, you know, with a pump and how many minutes it took, and with a big with his big truck and putting together equipment and estimating. And then another uh, Molly from. Um, Conservation Recreation talked about a grant they got in Holyoke where people on bicycles do it. Mm -hmm. That's a totally different way about it. We're more, at this point, if we could have get the truck idea going, mm -hmm. that might be a little, you know, to get started. But there's lots of different ways you could approach it. But as Susan said, the map would be really helpful. And then working with Rich to see if we could bite off a little bit of the burden, maybe far out. Yeah, we're going to have to try things and see what works and, and redo and, mm -hmm. and kind of refine our way through it for a year or two, I think, until we know what we like best. So my understanding is the deficit in water is not, we haven't, we haven't had enough moisture to overcome the deficit that exists. Well, in the state, in the state, the state, state yeah, yeah, backing up to that. Yeah. So, I don't know if there's any information I that I can find that because, like I said, that was word of mouth from the director, um, who I believe that the water superintendent got a letter from the DEP stating that they, the state will be going into a mandatory drought advisory by, um, you know, by, uh, mm -hmm. by DEP. So, mm -hmm. great. I'll start with that. All right, Arbor Day preparation, uh, where we stand with that. So you, Marilyn? Uh, well, sort of, because uh -huh. Lily, Molly, and I will be away for the People's Climate kind of March. So we've kind of been managing, but we won't physically be present. Okay. So I know. Um, so the handoff is to. You guys are going to do the whip distribution in front of City Hall on that Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday, and then Rich with the uh, High School Environmental Club with about five students will plant uh, in front of the, uh, near the post office, in front of the mm -hmm. antique store. This is the 22nd. That's on the 22nd? No, yes. This and then the, the whips is the 28th, 29th. And 28th. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about What's happening on the 20th and 29th? 28th and 29th? Yeah. Well, um, I think it was not last time we talked to Rich about how we'll have a table. We've scheduled volunteers, both um, four of us from Tree Northampton, Alicia, Susan, John, and myself, to be on hand. So it's at least one of us there all the time. And um, so we'll have a table and a banner and information. Alicia's working on a postcard that talks about Tree Northampton setback program, volunteering, and on the back it's a coloring activity for children. And so she'll have, we'll have crayons and try to get a little bit of engagement and have something people take away with them um, in addition to their tree. And I understand Rich has some information about how to care for the trees. And once we have the list of that, um, we're going to try to beef up too and try to co coach the volunteers and making sure people have any questions about the tree they take. Um, also, an ongoing project we have will have available um, the beginnings of a book we're developing as the city's been planting trees, the types of trees that are being planted, these beautiful sheets that show what the leaf looks like mm -hmm. and what the 
Um, and the final shape, size. Shape, exactly. Details about the types of trees you're finding. People are, they don't know many different types of trees and they don't understand why the types of trees that are being planted are, are being chosen. It's a little bit about what those trees look like to try to build a little familiarity with the names. So that's something um, Alicia's been working on developing. And if also um, people visit the tree gallery at Tree Northampton, she's continually putting up more images of trees, setback trees that have gone in in Northampton. And it has the street name and then the type of tree, again, educationally to help people start to learn the names of these trees. They really seem to only know maple and oak. Mm -hmm. yeah. and dogwood. Yeah. <laughs> and to try to, so we'll have some educational materials and hopefully engage people and also really talk to the people who do show up to volunteer to talk to them about becoming involved more in the planting and the watering and try to gauge some people who are maybe willing to commit at that event. So if that's anything I'm missing for Arbor Day, Susan? So you'll be there um, 9 to 3 on Friday and 9 to 1 on Saturday? Um, I think it's a little earlier on Friday we'll be setting up. Oh, 8. eight, eight yeah, I think it's a volunteer schedule. Cool. I'm sorry, I don't know how to schedule but I could. It's the schedule I sent you yeah. with a few more people added in and kind of putting people on, people are getting back to me that I contacted long ago and saying, do you still need help? So kind of a little waiting list and we'll see if some people, other people drop out this week as I start to confirm people, you know, are you expecting you? I'll give them a little more detail. I think we're always gonna have also one DBW rep there. Is that well, you probably have two. Okay. All right. Two or three. Yeah. I, I have a meeting. I have to go attend. No DBW worker can do something by this. Oh, yeah, we have to have DBW law. We have to have the other guys. Yeah. 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 You should have seen me the other day on South Street leaning on my shovel. <laughs> should have taken a picture of it before you posted yeah. it. It would have been hard. Yeah. If we gave you the best, you would have been good. Just, just yes, there'll be there'll be DPW support staff there, so we have to bring all right. the. Right, and you got right. the door hangers for watering the. the yes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, so, and are any commissioners going to be there? Where? At the at Arbor Day, the actual fiscal Arbor Day. On the 29th. Yes. They're all in Washington. 28th. Yeah. Exercising their powers in Washington. <laughs> is there anyone who's not going to Washington? I guess that would leave. You mean the, uh, no, we're all, going. we're all being paid to protest. So oh, you're, yeah. oh, yeah. We're all being paid to go to Washington. I read that. Well, we invite you all if you have time and would like to drop in. We'll just be so it, pleased. It's Friday, next Friday? Yeah, the 28th, yes. Yes. Yep. And Saturday. Yep, and Saturday. We'll be there both days. Yeah, Did we, we, no, right. Did we cover the Where? birthday plan? Oh, so yeah. Things in front of yeah. us, you know? If you like, we could try it. wouldn't go very well. That would be good. The, the plant things are out this Saturday in front of uh, 15. On Saturday. This Saturday. Like Bridge. 15 Bridge. Bicycle right. yeah. Bicycle for, for the trip, so, yes. So, and have we gone over this, the um, birthday planting, the Bridge Street planting? No. Have we gone have over Have we covered that? Is there, are we yeah. all clear what we're doing? Okay. It's it's good. Good. Volunteers are going to go. So, so someone's got these the uh, these N eight the North Lily, High School students. Lily is Lily is volunteer to take care of all that. So she's good. Communicated with them. The staff they'll show up and whoever is there is there. They have I think five people. So good. my whole crew is going to be there because I'm not lifting up ball and burlap. And that's this Saturday. That's correct. Right. So our goal is to actually. Try to pre dig the holes. I was going to say, you will loosen Yeah, pre dig the holes. Uh, we went there today, but uh, there was some missing marks from Columbia Gas. And uh, bring the trees down on Friday. So we have a couple of days of preparation. And just let them sit there overnight. And then Saturday morning, just you know, shape the holes up and drop them into the ground, water them. Take pictures. We will. All right. What kind are they going to be? All locust trees. Plenty of locusts. We have what, already in the, in the what time? 
Eight, I think. I think it's it's going to be eight to twelve. Friday, no Saturday. 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 Yeah. And you can you can cover pictures if you wanted help. I was going to find out if. If you would like to have someone cover pictures, that would save me from having to stop what I'm doing. That would be awesome. You know who else okay. took photos last year? She was she was on your list as Angie. Angie. She, do you know her, Gregory? No. Yeah. Uh, the list of volunteers from last year that I sent you, she um, yeah, I'm not she, sure she handed was... out whips for one shift on the Saturday, and she also took photos the day before we were planning at the schools. If one of us can come by, we'll um, do it on the earlier side. Yeah, that's fine. I'll make that sure way... I just take pictures if you know what's there. Okay, if we don't show up, you'll have, yeah. it'll fall on you. Yeah, we'll I'm not going to guarantee how good they're going to be, but I'll take some. <laughs> 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 Maybe you could get some of the uh, releases because they're going to have students. Oh, that's a great idea. Old enough to sign, but whatever. We have a lot of photos we don't use because yep. people have to sign releases. And, you know, and Tony would have to sign a release. And that can actually be really helpful to have someone come. So I will try to do that. Come with releases for you, photo Even releases. Do adults have to have releases? If you want to publish stuff. Oh, no kidding. I know nothing yeah. about this. Wow. It's good to have releases for anything you're publishing. Oh. Although, if you get them to turn around so you can't see their face. <laughs> right, right. Butt shots? It's safe. Right. That's a lot. How come I don't have to sign one of those? All right. Uh, are we done with that? Of uh, the um, press release that Lily wrote. Sorry, what about it? Uh, it was handed out with our stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we jumped on that on uh, the okay. chair report. Oh, um, can I say a few other things? I noticed I do have some notes here. Yes. Um, we got a button machine, so we're going to have buttons at Arbor Day. Mm -hmm. Little tree slogans on them. And I mentioned the postcard and the tree binder. Um, we've gone up to the community garden and measured out. We want to try to have a little nursery and have some trees. We have some learning to do about um, what we need to do to make the trees successful up there, the best way to go about that, but we're in planning for that. And then we've done some work on um, reaching out in the community for advisement um, for our little group. Um, we did connect with Hampshire Council of Governments, we haven't made an appointment yet. We also connected with SCORE, there's volunteers who are retired executives who help with planning the business aspects of organizations. And we do have an appointment later this week to meet with an attorney who's very passionate about trees, a long-time attorney here in the town. And hopefully he can um, advise us on some specific areas, including liability and uh, paperwork for 501c3 status and a couple of other points that you know, can't put him on. You guys are making tremendous progress. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, <laughs> And we also have been out looking at South Street, what that looks like, what are the spaces, and um, Susan has come along with me the other day and look at the other trees around and what it looks like for volunteers yeah, we, we and for trees. We have to talk to people walking by, too, and I think that that has a lot of value. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we, we found one person who's across from the old South Street School who doesn't want trees because she's about to put in a colonial garden that she wants to be a show place. Oh. Right on the corner of Monroe, that yellow house. Yeah. Oh, I wonder you know, why the, 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 the house is right on the, the back corner of its lot. So they have a, a front yard that's pretty good and she's got big plans. Across from the DAR, across the street. Yes, yes. Oh, oh across the side street. street. Yes, adjacent to yeah. yeah. Well, it's good to hear that because I was going to go like start knocking on their door more. But oh, not no, we, oh. we've already said to her that we will make a note that, you know, we appreciate her letting us know her plans and we will not come and bother her. So oh, it would be really good <laughs> rough. We're <laughs> putting set back door hangers place. on the streets on yeah, South Street the the that where we see that there's a good space and explaining to the homeowners that, you know, this, the city's looking at putting 
making a big push and planting a lot of trees in the tree belt, but trees in the setback environment will be healthier and happier and that if they're interested in them, and quite a few have been identified as Rob's mentioned, he's been working on that and some Everyone's talk, been working on everyone's that. Everyone's been, yeah, we've so been working on that, project. going up and down and talking to people and putting everything in a Google document. We get home, we type in what, um, who we talk to so That's that great. ladies' cool. comments are in there. And other people who, you know, they want to have one wants the same, whatever the neighbor chooses, they want the same one or for their set factory. Well, and that, you know, to build the canopy, be more healthy, not just rely on those tree belts and their the compromising compromises that exist for tree belt trees. So yeah, we picked up on been many hours like, of uh, work. You know, one of the rental houses, all the trash is out in the spot, which would be great for a tree. And you know, do we do we end up having them vandalized or something if it's planted where people are using that space for something else? And certainly take so, notes. Yeah, made a note to if the tree goes there to talk to those people and see, raise their awareness of what's going on with the trees. We also identified for the setback properties who owns the rentals, and one person owns a lot of several different, three or four different sites for setback that are good for setbacks. Mm -hmm. So that would be an efficient use of our time to talk to that one. Mm -hmm property owner and hopefully engage him into the program and that would make a big impact with not out you know meeting with lots of different people for instance but we are you know connecting with lots of people and getting they're excited about it and great okay that's all right we're good on our uh, recap list. Yes, let's see. <coughs> so regarding the tree list, Rich is going to provide uh, the protective schematic and then also the um, MGL chapter 87 and significant tree or ordinance, those two things. And then Jen and Rich are going to work on the low chart of position tree um, in May. Um, and with Amherst Nursery, we're actually going to get the list for the additional 140 to them to see what they have in stock. I'm going to send him actual what we want from this. He, yeah. He's got to give me a quote. Okay. So we may have, my guess is we're probably going to have less than 140 because it's probably so long. Mm -hmm. We waited so long. Okay. And Rob, you guys are going to start planting? Yeah, yep. I think uh, Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. Uh, not very many because we, we're just clearing out what's in the yard mm -hmm. currently, yeah. which is about 12 degrees. Six on the first list? Hmm? Six or so on the first list? Yeah, yeah. It's For hard. Friday and or Saturday. Yeah. Saturday and yeah. Friday. Oh. That's the 21st and 27th. And then for Arbor Day, uh, Tree Northampton is handling all the tree whip distribution or all the good buttons and tags and information. Thank you. <laughs> and then Rich uh, is going to be enhancing or getting the holes dug and the trees placed on the 21st, ready for the plant on the 22nd. And Lily's overseeing all that with the five Lily. students. Lily. Lily. She's going to the, the volunteer has well, well, I don't know. She, she made the arrangements. She won't physically be there. No. All right. No, she made all the arrangements, so this hopefully the environmental club students will just... Wait, is that, that's the 22nd, right? That's correct. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Maybe she... Yeah. No, she's already left, right? Oh, she's... Is that right? I think she's already left biking down. Oh. Oh, she's pregnant. Yeah. And I'll be in right. Boston for the same. Well, let me just back up a minute, though. So, are there any what we call tree leaders, people that work with the high school students? Or are you going to do it? You're going to do it? Anyone else? No, I don't have any other leaders. All right. Well, I don't. I don't think Tony is going to be available. So I'm. In, I'm, in, I'm personally inclined to be there. I didn't understand. I thought there were a bunch of, no. like, shade tree commissioners and leaders and you. I can't and all. be there that long. No. 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 It's kind of a just kind of a messy Arbor Day operation this year. It's not as streamlined as it was last year. Mm -hmm. Well, between the science march and the climate march. <coughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of which is 
just fine. I mean, you got to yeah. you got to do some depth, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 Um, well, I'm, I'm inclined to show up. So, what what time would you? Sit? Or um, uh, they should be there on eight. Eight noon. Eight noon. Yeah. Yep. That's all I have. Great. Yeah. Okay. You all set? Sweet. Your motion? I move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.